everybody. Welcome to Before College TV. I'm hosting another college conversation. I'm Harlan Cohen. It's great to see you. And it's also so exciting to have five. We're talking five ICC students joining us tonight. Graduates as well, right, Kiara? Because you're no longer an ICC student. You graduated. I did. I'm done. <laughs> Congratulations. How many years did it take you? Just the standard two straight from high school and then through the two years. Wow, that's remarkable. Thank you. you. Like, did you did you want to graduate in two years? Uh, yeah, that was the goal. I mean, the faster I could be through and be working and chase my dreams. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's exciting. Well, congratulations on graduating. Thank you. I think, and Jared, I think you just started, right? Yeah. Would you call yourself a first year or a freshman? What do you call yourself? I'm going to say first year. Uh, this is, it's it's not the first time I've taken classes at ICC. I took a class, just one accounting class 13 years ago. So now that I've had a change of uh, career, I want to start a different career path, completely different from accounting into something more human-based. Back in uh, 2019, uh, my girlfriend had a severe health crisis and while we were in the hospital, she was in the hospital for 40 days and it was an amazing journey. And it's like, I, I, I never, never considered nursing or healthcare anything before. And going through that whole journey, I felt like it, it was really something that I connected to, especially how the nurses would come in, they would be knowledgeable, they would talk to us, they would explain what's going on why it's happening, uh, what happens next. And I liked doing that stuff. I liked being a trainer in the accounts payroll department. So I just decided that now that I have this opportunity, I want to give back in the way that we were helped before. That's really beautiful. Making a change like that is scary though, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. I mean, I would imagine you have to be scared about this, this next phase. What makes you uncomfortable and and, and a little concerned? Um, just the learning all the, all the knowledge, honestly, um, everything, trying to retain all my knowledge from especially biology classes. Um, but what does help me a lot is uh, actually discussing everything that I learned with other people and explaining, you know, oh, hey, this is why your body is functioning this way. This is this is what we can do to help you out. Um, Cause you know, we still have issues from the, the event that happened in 2019 that now that I'm going through biology and I'm learning how more of the body works, it's helping us move forward with uh, some of the limitations that she now has. So oh, that's really and, that's exciting. And being able to recall that knowledge helps that has helped me so much on like the, the tests and everything just to, because I've, I keep going over it in my mind and keep, you know, keeping it fresh. Yeah. That's, that's, that's really wonderful. And it's, it doesn't sound like you're worried about a lot because even the question that I asked you, it sounds like you're more focused on learning and, and, and becoming a nurse than anything else. Yeah. So Kiara, I know that Jared's in this journey and you're, you're a, a nurse, you graduated, you're, you're doing your boards right now. Yeah. So what advice do you have for Jared and anyone who's starting their nursing journey at ICC? Oh, one piece. <laughs> you can, let's give us 10. <laughs> 10. Oh my goodness. Well, so I went straight from high school into nursing and I was what everyone, I don't know if people know this phrase, but like what everyone would call a try hard like graduating top of my class, I figured it was going to be a piece of cake. I was like, I just have to like pass the exams. I'll be fine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Take notes, review your notes, read them through, like voice record yourself and listen to it in the car if you have to, because it's going to be intense and you will fail probably a couple exams, but that doesn't mean you're a failure as a student or a failure as a nurse, because I can say like, I, I definitely failed an exam and that knocked me down hard, but 
I ended up graduating with honors in the honors program in the Alpha Delta New Honors Society for Nursing. So through every failure, you just have to keep your eye on that prize because nobody ever said nursing was going to be easy, but it will be really worth it. What do you think about that, Sharon? Uh, I think that's very good advice. Um, I've, you know, I've seen it with, with my, with my own self, you know, especially this last year's, you know, studying by yourself all, you know, my biology class was, you know, online anytime we didn't have instruction, we didn't have a lecture, we didn't have anything, you know, our, our labs was they sent us home a, a kit in a cardboard box and we worked through it during certain, you know, they would post instructions and then we would work through it ourselves and, you know, at the very beginning, the, the instructor said, you know, try and find a study buddy within the, within the class so that you can have someone to, to help study with. And I, I didn't do that. You know, I didn't pursue that. You know, I thought, you know, I got this. Um, you know, I probably have another two, 3,000 gray hairs now because of, of all of that. But, you know, I would say if given the opportunity, I would definitely get a study buddy for the next class. Yeah. Well, I think getting help and getting the support is something that we're going to talk a lot about. And I would love to learn, Kara, especially you being, you having gone through this, you know, I want to learn where you got the help because I think that Jared will appreciate that. And I think that everybody else, you know, who's gotten help, you can share that so that if there's other people who need it, they can find it. Uh, Sophia, Good to have you here. I'm very curious. I'm very curious about you. You're a first year graduate student, right? That's right. So are you done with ICC? Did you did you finish ICC? That's right. So I graduated from ICC in uh, 2019. And then I just graduated from Bradley University um, in May of this year. And I'm headed off to Northern Illinois University this fall. Congratulations. That's an, Thank that's, you. That's an amazing accomplishment. Thank you. And I'm, 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 I want to know what your dream is. What are you working so hard to, to, to achieve? I want to be a community college professor. Uh, my time at ICC impacted me so greatly that uh, I didn't want to leave. And I decided that uh, community college teaching is really um, the job that aligns most with my talents, my values, um, and my interests. So my end goal is to be a, a community college English professor. Ooh. That's so exciting. So clearly there was someone that impacted you. Like yes. something happened. Like who was the person? Like who was this magic person that really helped you? And I'm sure there was more than one, but. The- yeah, you know, at ICC, um, it's been a combination of three people. So the first okay. is uh, Professor Jerry Dietrich Clark of the psychology department. Um, and I was a supplemental instruction leader, which I can talk to you more about that in a little bit. But um, I was assigned to her class to um, kind of audit her class and assist. And that's really where I learned that teaching is what I really want to do with the rest of my life. Um, And of course, she wrote me letters to get into Bradley and all that kind of stuff. So she was the primary guiding light in my uh, ICC career. But also uh, Professor Jonathan Parker of the uh, political science department was very helpful and influential to me. And then Professor um, Jen Hopp of the English department. Um, so obviously, you know, English, um, and she was really helpful in talking to me about what it takes to become a community college English professor, um, and what kind of things to put on your CV, for example, or what kind of things to pursue to get hired. So, um, all three of those professors were very influential to me. Oh, that's so interesting. Cause you're homeschooled. That's right. So you didn't go to high school, right? That's right. My right. mom and my dad were my teachers. That's wild. And I know Henry, you're also homeschooled, right? Yes. Yes, I was. You and Sophia, you didn't attend the same homeschool, did you? Uh, no, no I'm afraid not. <laughs> that would be that would be odd. But you do. But there there are co ops where I don't. I learned this the other day that if you're homeschooled, you know it's like you need a social life. Like you need to interact. You can't just be home all the time. So there are these co ops, right, Henry? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And what are the co ops? Explain what a co op is. Well, so uh, a co op isn't anything that's um, like put on publicly. It's a private group that uh, a group of families will make and put together. Uh, I was one in one in Peoria called uh, Peoria Cooperative Academy. And we would meet once a week and <clears throat> have a chance to uh, study literature, have a science class, have choir, have musicals. Um, and it would just be different from normal school because we'd meet once a week. But we'd still meet for, uh, normally it was like from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. or something like that. 
So it was like we got to have the classroom experience, but only once a week. Were people nice? Like, would people tease you? Was it like, were there mean people? Um, honestly, more than anything, I probably had, well, especially in the DPET program here at ICC, I've had more people that are almost envious of me because I was able to get out of school sooner. And I was able to also be working through my high school. So uh, it gave me a chance to really get a head start. Yeah. But you didn't answer if people were nice to you. If yes, yes, for the I'm just part, wondering, though. like, I'm always interested in that. That's awesome stuff. Don't get me wrong. Like, it's cool that you got to work and you got to experience life. And But how do you adjust to the social environment of being all of a sudden in a college when you've been isolated and had your co-op maybe once a week? It wasn't as difficult of a transition as I had expected it to be. Um, and it was really largely positive, um, especially in an environment like ICC. You have so many different people. You have people from different socioeconomic backgrounds, people from different religious backgrounds, you know, students of different ages. So at my homeschool co-op, um, it was primarily folks of the same uh, age group, same religion, same political affiliation. And at ICC, it was just this whole new world of different people to meet. Um, and I remember in my very first ICC class, there was an 85 year old woman who was coming back to college to take classes to fill her time. Um, and she was one of my favorite people that I met at ICC. And I just thought that that's part of the beauty of community college is that it attracts so many different people. Um, and you never really know who you're gonna meet and they can really expand your horizons and your perspective. Yeah, I think it's, it has to be intimidating to be an 18 year old or 17 year old to be in a class with someone who's 85 or 45, uh, how, how, did you, how did you build those relationships with those people who were so different than you? You know, what's funny is um, it's a stereotype that homeschoolers are really good at interacting with adults and not necessarily good at interacting with their peers. I'm sure you've heard that, Henry. So for me, it wasn't really very difficult. Um, but I think that you'll find that a lot of people we have a lot more in common with than we don't, you know? Um, and this, this 85 year old woman who was just a delight, um, she, uh, and I shared a lot of the same interests. So despite this, you know, 60 year gap in our age, um, we had a lot of the same interests. We were interested in Peoria history. We were interested in coffee. We were interested in arts. So, you know, it was a lot easier to find dif or similarities than differences. Did you ever hang out and like go driving, like cruising, like partying? Uh, well, no, but we did go to a uh, field trip to the Art Institute of Chicago. So maybe that counts. <laughs> that's partying. That's, that's great. <laughs> that's homeschool kid partying. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's really fun. Raina, good to have you here. You are a sophomore, correct? It's your second year? Yes. 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 And I'm curious, Raina, do you have a dream? Like, what's your dream? What do you... Inspired to do, create, change. What excites you about the future? A dream. I have more than a dream. Something that I like, I'm really excited about, and I'm really looking forward to is just, you know, just get more high schoolers getting involved. Like that's just something that I've always been passionate about. So being involved, like you like to help them, support them. You know, I like to meet people, talking here and there, like some one-on-one -on -one time. Um, I like to get in, getting to know people and while also helping like other people. So it's getting to know them while doing other things for other people. So that's what I really enjoy. Yeah, well, that's great. We'll get, hopefully people will be on campus, which I'm sure they will. So you'll get to do, you'll get to do a lot of that. Uh, let's go through. I'm, I'm curious to know some of your other dreams because I want people to get a sense of who you are. Uh, Jared, I know that we, we talked a little bit before about you going to this nursing program. Do you have a dream job? Is there a dream place you'd like to work? Uh, a oh. dream place you see yourself? So I, I guess totally like to give back. Um, I want to, if, if possible, you know, uh, pursue into neurology uh, or into possibly uh, rehabilitation. Hmm. So, so working one of those two floors, um, uh, you know, I, I see myself at working at the hospital that, you know, helped us so much. Um, and just, you know, being, you know, with those patients, you know, like I said, neurology, you know, to, to help others because neurological 
you know, instances are, are very diverse, very um, robust, and also the most frightening because we know so little of the brain that, you know, the, the, the family of the patients coming in, you know, need knowledge to help understand what's going on with their loved one and how to best take care of them if they should need further care after they get out of the hospital. Yeah. So you have a specific area you want to work. This is, yeah. this is great. And uh, I know that Kiara, you have very specific goals and dreams and they might even overlap where you'll see Jared in, in, in this, in the hospital, you know, passing each other. It's uh, <laughs> I know. Isn't that cool? What's your dream, Kiara? So my dream is to work in women's health, and I actually will be doing that shortly after I pass boards um, within a residency program. So labor and delivery, pediatrics, and um, postpartum. And then further along after that, I would love to practice as a women's health nurse practitioner, kind of maybe in the hospital or in a gynecologist's office. For someone who's interested in nursing, you are talking about doing something that it sounds like there's another, there's more training, more schooling. So can you kind of just walk us through what that process is for someone who's interested in going to nursing, but then wants to be in a more specialized area? That was actually something when I was in high school, I had probably a gazillion questions for so many people about, you know, what route should I go? I really didn't understand the difference between an associate's degree in nursing versus a bachelor's degree in nursing. So ICC offers an associate's degree in nursing program. So you can go through and take like English and math and everything at the same time, or if not before, um, you take your two-year nursing program. And then you go on and you sit for NCLEX, which is, you know, Illinois state board so that you can practice as a nurse. But if you go through a bachelor's program, you know, you have those four years, but then you also sit for that same, the same NCLEX, so nursing boards. So your degree will be different, but your title is still going to be registered nurse. But after you take your associate's degree in nursing, um, most hospitals in this area, they're called magnet hospitals. They want you to get your bachelor's within five years of signing on to work with them. Kind of makes the hospital look a little bit better if the majority of their staff has that higher level of education. So if you get your associate's degree in nursing, you know, you can come out from a community college sometimes debt-free because there are lots of scholarships and then work for a hospital that will pay for you to get your bachelor's online. So that route is kind of why I went that way because it would be cheaper than paying four years for Bradley and coming out <laughs> with a ton of debt, but then the same degree. So that's kind of the introductory. And then, you know, if you want to go further on, you can like pursue your master's. And I mean, in that avenue, I want to go for, you know, a nurse practitioner, but some people go to teach, you know, to be a clinical instructor. There's just so many different pathways within nursing that make it a very like versatile career. You'll never get bored. <laughs> yeah. And you said you are doing it for, you know, the right reasons or your, your heart's into it. And I've heard when it comes to nursing, you really have to do it not for the money or the security, but really because it aligns with your heart. And, and why is that something you're drawn to? So when I was seven years old, I mean, when you're a little kid, you never really fear death. You don't really understand um, when someone passes away or like someone else is hurting. You're kind of self-centered. I mean, a child is kind of self-centered. When I was seven years old, um, I remember I was in the back seat of my dad's car and he was in the passenger seat because he had been having some headaches that his doctor said, you know, don't drive for a little bit. Well, I remember seeing him just tense up and get stiff and then like shaking violently. And at the time I had no idea what was going on. But then later I learned that he had suffered a grand mal seizure and needed to have um, neurosurgery. And at seven years old, that was traumatizing. I mean, even to talk about it. Um, but that was what drew me, seeing how the nurses cared for him. And I wanted to give back in the same way. Yeah. Well, thanks for sharing that. And I'm, I'm sorry that you had to go through that. And I hope, I hope he, it turned out okay. Um, mm -hmm. You know, as much, as much as you want to share, um, I hope he was able to survive that and, and work through that. But was he able to get through that? He did. Yes. Okay. I mean, he's had some other health issues, but thankfully the nurses care that they provided, he had a remarkable outcome. 
Yeah. And you remember being there and seeing that? Oh yeah. Yeah. It was very vividly. Really? Was there a particular nurse or caregiver that you recall? Um, something? I remember this <laughs> heavier set big woman that reminded me of my grandma when I was in the waiting room and she gave me the biggest hug. And I just, the way that nurses care for the family too is huge. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have talked to many nurses and just have such an enormous appreciation. Not only that, my, my kid the other day had a appendicitis and um, ended up having an appendectomy. This is like maybe like three weeks ago. And um, being a father and having, you know, my kid, all of a sudden we, you know, we go to urgent care, then we go to the emergency room. And then, uh, then someone comes in and says, you know, the surgeon will be talking to you. You know, he's going to be having surgery, you know, at 6 a.m. And trying to console him and being a father who wants to make sure everything's okay, uh, man, and then, and then they, we, had to, we had to work hard. They, my wife then came to the emergency room, and that was hard for her to get in because of the COVID restrictions. And then fortunately, in the pediatric unit, they, they said, as long as you stay in the room, you know, you could have both parents there. So, and they were so kind and it really, it makes the difference. It makes, it makes a tremendous difference. So, yeah, thank you for doing what you're doing. And for anybody who's interacted with nurses, it's just, it's, uh, you know, God's work in so many ways. I don't need to bring God into this, but it, you know, I, I like God. So I did. <laughs> um, anyway, thank you. Thank you for doing that. I appreciate that. Uh, Henry, uh, I want to get to know you a little bit better. Do you have a dream, Henry? Is there something that excites you, something you aspire to do, a reason you're you're at ICC? Growing up, I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted what I wanted to do. Uh, it was a little bit of a, you know, kind of a gradual process where I understood what I was really passionate about. Um, I mean, I started thinking I was, you know, I was going to become a chef, and uh, things things changed pretty quickly. And uh, I realized I really like figuring out how things work. So in junior high, I was in like a robotics league where we had to design robots to do very specific tasks. And I really enjoyed finding how they worked and how they did the tasks that they were supposed to do. And that slowly led into high school and I got a car and I was tink tinkering with my car. And we had these tractors on the farm that I didn't know how to work. And so I really felt a calling to engineering. So I began taking like higher level math and pursuing robotics a little bit more because I had good scholarships for engineering. Then all of a sudden I realized I really don't like math. So <sighs> instead of designing products or uh, machinery, I decided that I'd rather be working on them hands-on. I'm also not a very um, technical person. So I really enjoy uh, physical things that I can see and touch. And that really just drove my passion for working on uh, heavy machinery, light duty machinery, uh, and anything in between. Do you see yourself working on it, like, you know, farm machinery? Do you see yourself, you know, having a business like what, and, and, you know, you can change your mind every year, but is there something that you have in your sights right now? I, I live on a farm and we are row crops. So we farm corn and soybeans. I didn't, I wasn't super drawn to it when I was younger, but as I've started more into a real job and uh, having an opportunity to, you know, work a nine to five or something like that. I realized that I enjoy the family aspect of our farm. And so after school, I plan to go back to our farm, but um, I got scholarships and a sponsorship from a ag dealership. So they're helping pay for my school and my tools. And so in return, I'm going to be working for them for at least a year after I get out of school. Then I also have internships um, during this next year. What kind of internships? Um, so through the DPET program, we have eight weeks of classes and then eight weeks of internship during our spring and fall semester of your sophomore year. So uh, that's what I'll be starting. Um, and I'll be taking on the roles of a um, diesel technician. Nice. So and a, a diesel tech works on what type of machinery? Uh, so that can really vary on what industry you go into. <clears throat> so I personally am going to be working on <clears throat> excuse me, uh, agricultural equipment. So uh, anywhere from combines to tractors to lawnmowers. Uh, there's also the construction industry where you can be working on backhoes, uh, just about any industry that has 
a big machine that does a job has a diesel tech. So even if you're working on the assembly line, um, I mean, you have machines that have to be serviced there. Uh, if you want to work on high electricity stuff like barges, uh, it's all there. Yeah, that's cool. It's interesting to hear how you how you get to do that, um, having been homeschooled. But I guess you have those you have the equipment at home, so you could like take apart the tractor. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, tractors are pretty pretty expensive, so uh, okay. I probably would have broke it if I took it apart. <laughs> But I did have an opportunity because I tinkered with like uh, go karts and mini bikes and things like that and lawnmowers. So I would make a little bit of money, buy a go kart, it would break down, then I'd take it apart and look at it. Uh, right. Or like if we had a lawnmower or something that broke down and then we weren't going to fix, it was a good opportunity to kind of get myself familiar with it. Yeah, that's interesting. It's it's uh, I, I love hearing about all the different things that that you're all doing. And now Henry, you are. A, you're a sophomore, so you've been there for a year, but you said you did a program before you actually became a full-time student. Is that right? Um, I didn't, I wasn't involved in a program, but I was taking gen eds all throughout high school. And then um, when I was 17, I took an automotive class at the, uh, at ICC. And that was just to make sure that I wouldn't hate turning wrenches all the time. Uh, and so that, that then the next year I applied for, uh, well, I guess I was 16. Then I applied the next year for uh, the DPET program. Okay. okay. So how old are you now? Uh, I am 18. So you're 18. So you're getting older. Yeah. <laughs> that's, what, that's what happens. And then are you going to continue on after you get your associates or are you going to start working? Um, I'll be starting to work as soon as I finish here next spring. And after my internships finish, um, I, I, I thought about going on and getting a bachelor's, but uh, in the industry that I'm working in, it's um, you can also learn a lot through on the job training. And so I didn't think that it would be as valuable to me unless I wanted to go on to be uh, a sales representative or something related. Yeah. I was just thinking of um, you're going to be back on the family farm, right? So, you know, I wonder the business part and, you know, I don't know much about farming. You know, I, gr I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't know anything, but, I, but the part that I'm thinking is the business part of like running a farm and all of the other aspects uh, that, that go hand in hand where the degree might be helpful. I don't know if that's something you considered. Absolutely. So the business side is, I would say, arguably a lot bigger than the technical side of farming. Um, being able to handle the grain markets, being able to, well, even agronomy or uh, horticulture, all these different degrees would be extremely helpful. Um, but my brother, who is actually 10 years older than me, has gone through ICC before me, and he went through the business side. And he's very passionate about the business side and the spreadsheets and um, figuring out all the logistics. And so I'm blessed to have him as a partner on the farm to where uh, he's able to handle that. Okay, um, so he's he's the guy he's the guy running the numbers, and you're the one yeah. running the farm. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. Not but. yet. I mean, you're 18, <laughs> so like I've given you like running the farm, but like essentially that that could be the setup, right? Maybe. Uh, it would be very joint. I mean, okay, you're so, you're like so kind. You're like a nice guy, man. You're like I get it. I hear you. Well, right, you're you're a team player. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 No, it would. It, it's more that we had we never had the opportunity to work on our own equipment uh, in depth. We would always have to take it to a dealership to work on it, or um, have a friend work on it, or something like that. So this is going to give us the opportunity to work on our own equipment uh, when we have to do more uh, in depth repairs. Yeah, I'm sure that's expensive to outsource all that. So absolutely, like probably like huge, like you know, big time. So. Yeah. So that's awesome. That's interesting. That's, that's really cool. Um, Raina, so you are a psychology major, correct? Yes. And you are super involved. I, I mean, one of the things I like to do, and, and you all see this, if you, if you go to the webpage where we get to talk about everybody, kind of see their places. Um, you do a lot, Raina. You're involved with Phi Beta Lambda, Phi Theta Kappa, Sigma Kappa Delta, a lot of Greek letters there. Student Government <laughs> Association, 
also ICC Honors Program, the LMS Review and Selection Task Force. Sounds fascinating. I mean, you're busy. Is this all true, yeah. Raina? Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, all of it. Yep. <laughs> of course it's all true. It. Yeah. So, Raina, I'm curious, how did you get so involved? Because a lot of people end up, I think a lot of people go to a community college and they're either in their car or they're in their classroom. <laughs> I do both. <laughs> Right. So how did you how did you decide to get involved? Was that intentional or did, did people invite you? Where it really started, I think, is in high school. Um, you know, I was, you know, asked to do things or there are some things that I was just really interested in. So I was like, OK, why not? Well, you're very you're very involved. So tell me when it comes to the places where you found friends and where you found, uh, you know, connection. What are some of the organizations that you've really felt a sense of belonging and, 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 and share those so other people can get a sense of the, some of the places at ICC that they can find connection and community. When I started ICC, I wasn't expecting to like be in anything. I didn't even know anything was happening um, until I looked onto their website, ICC's website and, you know, saw what was available and, you know, reached out to people. I would just say like, if you can be involved in something, anything like just one it doesn't you know whatever you choose i think you know you definitely should because you know you'll meet people from different backgrounds and you know it it could push you out of your comfort zone and lead you to great things so what's a really easy accessible group or organization for new students to participate in um i would say um the first one might be phi beta lambda um, I love their environment. Um, their advisors are great. Um, and even though it says in the description and how, you know, usually people talk about it, um, it's a business organization, but, uh, you know, for business um, majors, but I don't necessarily see it as that. Um, I'm not a business major myself, um, but they also say it's part of like a leadership organization. So, you know, just, you know, developing your skills and, you know, just meeting new, new friendly people. And yeah, there's a lot of opportunities within that organization. Who else is in Phi Beta Lambda? Is there anyone else in this group? No. And when you, when you want to join, do you just walk into the room? Do you sign up? Like, how do you go from being a student who's not involved to being involved? Um, well, I would definitely say like reaching out to maybe any um, people that go to ICC that you know. Um, if not, definitely check out the um, ICC's website because um, they'll provide you a list of all the advisors to contact. Um, I would say contact Jennifer. No offense to all the other advisors. You know, Feel free to email them if you want, but Jennifer for sure. Um, I reached out to her and she was, she was just so welcoming and I knew that Okay, this is this is gonna be fun. I have I have I have like this this seems like it's a good idea, so I'm gonna go with it. How did you reach out to Jennifer and know that Jennifer was someone who would be receptive? Um, well it was mostly communication, really quick communication. Um I when I reached out, I was like, you know, I'm interested, what is this about? And you know, she just and it wasn't like, oh well, this is this or come come to wherever or just do any extra things now she laid it all out there so that you know i wasn't left with any questions so i could just be like all right here's where i sign up all right i'll see you at the next meeting basically <laughs> so so you yeah, called she's super helpful. Or did you call or email uh email so you sent an email and she was super responsive right so anybody who's interested in something you just email right you just send a note or you can see the people is there an activity fair just to kick off um, the year there has been in the past um there wasn't the past semesters right. but yeah it's something that we're definitely thinking about and you know reaching more you know incoming students yeah i don't think a lot of people recognize the opportunities that are available at icc and community colleges especially when it comes to the leadership opportunities and i tell them and tell me if i'm right or wrong i tell them a lot of people don't do these things and when you get to do these activities and when you get to be involved, you get to meet incredible people. And there isn't a lot of competition to do these things because a lot of people are doing other things. And 
and it's incredible because you get to have these awesome experiences. Uh, so, you know, would you agree with that? Is it, is it, is it easy? Is it accessible? Are there always opportunities available? Oh yeah, for sure. And, you know, I, I have hope that, you know, when things start, um, going back to normal, I guess you could say, um, you know, there'll be like the clubs that weren't available beforehand, they might be available now. And there's, there's just a wide variety. And, you know, sometimes you have to just, you know, take a leap of faith and be like, okay, this seems interesting. I'm not like, I'm like 99% sure that this might be what I want to do, but I I'd say go for it. Yeah. And then this is, for, this is for all of you. I mean, it's scary to get involved. You know, I think it's I think it's frightening that people might judge you, or you might get rejected, or people are going to think you're weird, or you're going to just feel awkward. You know, what do you say to those students? Is that first of all, is that valid? Is that something that any of you went through, or any of you shy and you know a little afraid? Did did, I, did that was that hard for any of you? Yeah. Yeah. If I could speak on that really quickly. Um, yeah, um, one of the activities that I participated in um, in high school was actually like a service trip. Um, it was just like a nine-day trip, and we'd go and um, volunteer um, in Michigan. And yeah, that like that pushed me out of my comfort zone completely. I mean, I <laughs> I don't know. It's just uh, I that, that trip really changed, changed me. And like, after all the other years that I went, because I enjoyed it so much, yeah, it's just, it's just awesome. Yeah. Well, I really encourage people to get involved. Uh, I know that the academics could sometimes kick people's butt a little bit. I know Kiara, you talked about, you failed a little bit, like that's oh, pretty yeah. cool. And I'm not ashamed to say that. I mean, to start, I was, cause I graduated like seventh in my class out of like 300 students. So I was, I mean, I never, I had never even gotten a B in my life. And then I enter a nursing program and I fail an exam. I was in tears. You have to kind of be okay in the uncomfortable because you're never going to like reach anything from your comfort zone, if that makes sense. What'd you do when you got that grade? And I know you cried, but like Mm -hmm. after you were done crying, you know, (laughs) what'd you do to fix this? Yeah. I sought out my professors, always schedule a test review. I mean, some students don't take advantage of that because it takes extra time, but review every single question because you're going to need to know that content for boards. So anything that you missed or may have misunderstood, it's important to seek out your professors because they're the ones that taught it. That is the number one thing that I would recommend. Um, and that's what helped push me through it because in the nursing program, you have like so many different advisors and, um, like you had talked about a support group, I had several nursing classmates that I would turn to and ask for clarification with them and then just push yourself even harder and kind of look at that little sticky note on your mirror of, you know, what your goal is to realize that failures don't define you. Did you get academic support? Did you go to any tutoring? Did you reach out directly to to some people to help? I actually didn't really take advantage of the tutoring, um, department that is like right above the library in the Peoria campus. And then, you know, there's tutors at the East Peoria campus. I didn't do that, but I had some classmates who did and found it very helpful because there are nursing specific tutors. Um, For me, I just consulted with my professors and they kind of served as tutors, so to speak, and then just studied even harder with what they, how they guided me. But that's scary. It's scary to be so successful. I'm, I'm also curious, you know, I want to learn I want to learn, I'm going to ask you in a, in a moment, but I'm curious, you graduated, you know, one of the top students in your class and you probably had lots of options when it came to what school to go to, whether you want to go to a community college or go to a residential school, a four-year university. Uh, you know, since I started asking, I might as well just continue. Uh, how did you make the choice to go to ICC as opposed to going a different route? There were two main reasons for me. One financial reasons. Um, Four-year colleges are very expensive, regardless of how many scholarships you get. They're never really free. (laughs) At least they weren't for me. And then two, just that it would be like an accelerated program. I would have, since I'm graduating after two years, I'm going to have two years more experience as a nurse than I would if I went through a bachelor's program. So those were the two main reasons for me that I chose that route. And I know they're very similar reasons for a lot of other people and why they choose it. 
And then after those, after those, those two years, so then you're going to go on to get your bachelor's degree. Where is it? Where are you going again? I have not decided yet. Um, I'm going to choose an online program so that I can do it at my own pace while I'm working. Yeah. I mean, you're super motivated. I mean, it's really fascinating. Do you feel like you're, you're missing out on the social aspects and, you know, all those other pieces that sometimes go hand in hand with, with being at like, cause Sophia, you were at Bradley, you know what that experience is like. Do you, you know, do you worry about that? Or? I do feel like going this route did kind of hinder me from meeting a lot of people and branching out. Like you would get that experience at a four-year program. I know Raina talked about, you know, get involved. I mean, in the nursing program, like you hardly have time to even breathe. So doing a program that is this fast paced, I did miss out on meeting people and getting those opportunities. But for me, I never really thought of college as a place to socialize. I thought of it as a place to chase my dreams. And I know everybody views it differently, but I used it to further my education rather than to socialize, if that makes sense. I mean, both are good, good reasons, but that's just kind of what my viewpoint was. Yeah. Well, you seem really focused. I mean, I think that that's a little unusual just you really are very clear with what your vision is. And, and I think that really helps. But also um, just recognizing that ICC is a great option. You know, I don't think people give community colleges enough credit. And I, I think there's so many amazing experiences that you can have if you seek them out. Mm -hmm. You know, Reyna, you've, you've sought them out. Sophia, I'm really curious to hear, uh, you know, I know that you've had a wonderful experience, incredible experience at ICC, so much that you want to be a professor at a community college, which is just so incredible. So I'm curious to know, during your journey, did you ever struggle? Um, you know, did you need to get help along the way? I struggled with some classes uh, here and there, but for me, I worked as a um, supplemental instruction leader in the academic support center. And so I got to see the other side of the coin of, of being the one to provide the help to students. Um, and that was really a very, um, kind of influential experience on the person that I am now and my career aspirations and those kind of things. So um, I think it's awesome to be able to see both sides. Um, but I did go a couple of times, you know, bring papers in, just get a second pair of eyes on them, which is always a good idea, a uh, tip from an English major. Explain to me that that part of being a uh, an SI. So what is an SI? Yeah, so SI stands for a supplemental instruction leader. Um, and it's kind of like a tutor, except you have um, a few more responsibilities. So you um, audit a class and assist a professor. So I assisted in uh, Jerry Dietrich Clark's psychology class for three semesters. And you also plan and host your own study sessions um, where you come up with the curriculum, you come up with the exercises um, and the study materials and everything like that. You hold exam preps and you also get to hold office hours, which is pretty cool. Um, and SI was an awesome experience. Um, and it's actually largely the reason why I have a TA ship. I would highly recommend getting involved in the SI program. Yeah. How do you get selected for that? Or how do you get? Yeah, to so it's funny. Um, people do actually still look at bulletin boards because that's how I found out about the SI programs. I saw a flyer on a bulletin board at um, ICC and I thought, huh, that seems like something I'd be interested in. Um, so I applied and I met with um, the program leaders um, and the director of the Academic Support Center, um, and I was lucky enough to get hired. So any course that you have a B or higher in, uh, you're eligible to teach or to work as a supplemental instructor. So for me, it was psychology, but it could be really be any course. I know the sciences tend to need a lot of SI leaders and uh, anything STEM. But yeah, it's really um, a great way to sharpen your own skills and to help other people along the way. Yeah, it sounds great. I'm really curious about your relationship with with Jerry. You mentioned you mentioned her a few times, and I'm just wondering when you started that when you started working in in, in her office. You know how did how did you form such a close relationship? You know, was there any crises in your own life where? You needed help and, and these people were here for you or was there another way that you formed this relationship? Yeah. So I had actually had um, Jerry as my own psychology professor. Um, and so when I was, you know, applying to be an SI, I was like, well, who would I really like to work with? And I was like, well, I had such a, an awesome experience in Jerry's class that I'd really like to help out again. Um, and so, you know, she was so helpful to me because 
there are things that you don't anticipate when you're, you know, working with students. Um, we had situations where maybe a student was not behaving in the way you would expect them to, or in a way that was conducive to a learning environment. Um, maybe you had students trying to contact you outside of class. You know, maybe you had students that disclosed things to you about their personal life that they needed help with. Um, and so there were a couple of times when I would, you know, be crying in <laughs> Jerry's office and saying, how do I handle this situation? Um, and so she provided, you know, great insights and in what to do, um, how to handle these situations, because something's always going to come up. That's inevitable. Um, but when you're an SI leader, it's important to lean on your professor and on the rest of the academic support center. Yeah. So how did being a ballet, a, a trained uh, ballet dancer, you know, it sounds like you, ballet has been a big part of your life, right, Sophia? That's right. Yeah. Um, I trained in a pre-professional program until I was 17 um, when I started college. Um, and it's funny is everything in my life has all kind of like worked together in interesting ways that you wouldn't expect them to. So I was a... Um, a ballet instructor when I was younger at my studio and I assisted with classes and I eventually had a class of my own. So I got really comfortable taking control of a classroom environment and kind of being in charge of stuff and um, having people rely on me. Um, and so those skills transferred really well over into the SI program, which in turn transferred over into my current job as a ballet instructor which will then transfer over into my job as a TA. So it's it's interesting how all of your life experiences all really do build on each other in interesting ways that maybe you wouldn't anticipate. Yeah, when you were doing that pre-professional -ball pre ballet program, was the goal to be a professional ballet? It was, yeah, um, up until I was 17 and I developed chronic migraines that made it so I couldn't dance anymore. Oh. Um, and that's actually how I ended up at ICC is I was like, well, this career path, I've been banking on that for you know 10 years. And now I suddenly can't do this career. So what am I going to do? Um, so my grandma went to ICC. My mom went to ICC. My sister went to ICC. So I said, you know what? I'll enroll in a couple classes and see what happens. Um, and that's how I fell in love with academia and more specifically community college teaching. So, um, you know, although career in ballet would have been beautiful and wonderful, I'm really happy with, with where I ended up. Yeah. You seem really, I mean, you seem very uh, balanced. And Thank you. And um, not, that's not even a ballet reference. Um, <laughs> it's just your general demeanor, but, but being on a path for so many years and planning and, and, you know, you're going to be a, a professional ballerina. Is that what, is ballerina the right word? Is mm -hmm. it ballet? Yeah. Right. You're going to be a professional when you realized you couldn't do that. And that was no longer your dream, which happens to lots of people. You know, was there a, was there a difficult period where you had to like mourn the loss of this and this identity? And yeah. how did you get through that? Absolutely. You know, um, absolutely. There was a, a long period of that for me. Um, and for me, it, it was uh, leaning into other passions. So at ICC, I got the opportunity to study English, which I've always loved. I got the opportunity to study history. Um, and so kind of like leaning into those other passions and really enjoying them and reminding myself that, you know, I'm a multifaceted person. Ballet might be part of who I am, but there's a million other parts of me, you know, English major, I love history, I love teaching. And so um, being at ICC really helped me to kind of um, develop other parts of myself. Um, and I know that a lot of people are doing the same at ICC. So you're in definitely in good company. You're definitely with other people who are kind of determining another path for their life. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, Raina, I'm curious to know how did you choose ICC? What was your what was your path from high school? Was this always your plan? Um, I'm glad you asked that. Um, well, I, mean, I, I was just talking about this today. Um, you know, I my mom went to ICC, and it was kind of like planned out for me in a way. I was like, okay. ICC, like, all right, sure. Um, you know, it wasn't my first choice. But when everything happened in 2020 and all, I was like, I am so glad that I am here. I'm, you know, I, it would have been so completely different if I had gone someplace else. And, you know, a big thing for um, me was financials, too. Um, I think uh, Kira mentioned something like that, too, along those lines. Um, but, yeah, that was that was a big one for me. I'm really glad that um, I'm at ICC and you know, I've made friends and everything. It's been, it's been great. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm happy you found your place and I mean, you, you do so much and you really have, 
you've really been taking advantage of it, which is which is amazing. Um, when it comes to getting involved with like SGA and uh, participating, is that something anyone can do? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, you know, there's different things that um, different positions that you can run for. Um, there's the exec board, and then you can also run as like a senator for your class. Um, but yeah, and I think um, for just um, ICC in general and also their programs, I personally think that they do a really good job of broadcasting those types of things on social media, especially Instagram, Facebook, and yeah, what other, what other ones that they use. But yeah, I think those two are like the big ones, especially. Yeah. Well, that's good. I'm glad that there's, there's access. I think that's really important. And uh, I always want people to get involved because I know, I don't know if there's like anyone who knows the stat of like how many students get involved or don't get involved percentage wise, but getting involved tends to be the thing that really determines your success in, 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 in many ways. And students who get involved, and you're all involved because you're here in some capacity, uh, tend to complete more and be more successful, which I think is really, really important. Uh, Jared, when, it, when you decided to continue your education and go back to ICC, what was that like to be someone who had been removed from school for so long and then going back into that environment? What was the, just, you know, the emotional journey. I'm really curious to hear about that. As an older student, you know, I graduated high school in 2000. This is my first year back to school. It was a little intimidating knowing that, you know, everyone in the, my classes are going to be half my age. With the online anytime classes, you know, that gives me a lot of, that gave me a lot of freedom um, to do things that I had already set up in order to, you know, fit the, the classes and education round in. Um, and it's been a great experience, actually. It's so not what I expected it to be. I had gone from my career where I was the answer guy. Everyone came to me for answers. I was a trainer. I was the first one to get picked when new systems would come on board. You know, I was the knowledge base. So then to go now, I know nothing. It's intimidating. And it, it makes me try harder because, you know, if, if anybody's going to ask me a question, I want to, I'm the guy that, you know, I'm the teach a man to fish guy. If you come to me with a question, I will show you how to get the answer so that you don't need to ask that question again. Or if someone asks you that question, you know how to help them. You know, you can pay it forward. Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Henry. How did you choose to go to ICC? What was what was your path and why was this the right place for you? Yeah, so um, I started out with, uh, it was a very close and uh, reasonable, uh, by reasonable, I mean price-wise, very reasonable. And uh, it was somewhere I could start before I needed to be in like an official program and feel okay about not, um, uh, not worrying about spending my money unwisely. Uh, and so that allowed me to take early classes. And then after after taking some classes in high school, I knew that ICC was uh, a place where I could definitely learn things. And after that, when I wanted to get into my uh, specific program and see if ICC was a um, had a proper diesel program, uh, I talked to former graduates. My brother had gone to ICC for agricultural business. Um, both my parents had gone to ICC, uh, and I had lots of friends who had at least started at ICC and then pursued their degree later at like Bradley or ISU, and that was what I originally thought I would do, uh, but then I realized that I could get everything I needed at ICC, um, and then for the program itself, that was something kind of cool. So I had lots of graduates that I could talk to that gave me great, great feedback, um, telling me that how quality of the program was with great teachers. Uh, right now we have Mr. Campbell and Mr. Gardner and they are fantastic. Um, so I got to hear a little bit about them. And then once I was in the program, I actually found out that it was recognized by a couple manufacturers to be the best in the country. So I was really excited to hear that. It's amazing that it's recognized by all these, these, uh, these companies. How come you yeah. didn't know that? How did you not know that before? Well, I, it's not advertised super well, honestly. Um, once I got into the actual classroom and had my interview, uh, they had all the plaques on the wall from 
different manufacturers. And then also, so this is something I personally have done now uh, after being in the program for a year. Every year they have something called Skills USA, uh, and Caterpillar puts it on to, um, well, it's a contest, but it's also an association. But the contest part is to uh, put your skills back to back against other schools, students, and students from your same school. Um, yeah. And so I had a, an opportunity to be in that. And uh, I think ICC has won state the last, like, oh, it's been like 15 years in a row. And then uh, country, they've won like three out of the last five. So. Wow. And you were just. Uh, yeah, I was, but I was competing as a freshman. So I didn't have all the knowledge that a sophomore would. So about half the things we went over, um, I had only done through working on them, not actually through school. So I didn't win, but I did okay. How about next year? Uh, I, I hope to win. You look like you're ready, man. You're like, you're like, you're like, you're charged up. Oh, absolutely. I am. I'm fired up. <laughs> I love it. I love, uh, I love that you get to advertise that the, the department. So tell me exactly the department that is recognized nationally. Uh, diesel powered equipment technology. DPA. Right. Right. So if you're interested in pursuing that path, you're a good person to talk to as well. Sounds like you got a lot of help, but Henry, if, if people want to ask questions, are you open to answering those? Yeah, absolutely. Nice. And then the money, do you, you know, I want to talk about money a little bit. Uh, I know that Kiara, that was a, a, a big, a big part of your journey was the money. And you were saying that even if you get scholarships, it's still, it's still expensive to attend a four-year school. Tell me a little bit about your financial journey and, you know, if you want to share like, you know, how much it cost, did you get any financial aid? That'd be, that'd be really helpful. So like, do you want me to cover scholarships? Like if, if people are looking for those or yeah, just... give me, give me everything. Okay. So when I was a senior, I actually sought out just like English professors, um, math professors, like at my high school asking them, you know, previous graduates, do you remember any scholarships that they applied for? Like the biggest thing is to start early because scholarships go fast. There could be banks that offer them like nursing homes, um, like Kiwanis clubs, just places that you wouldn't even think of. And sometimes you don't even have to write an essay. You just have to submit like your grades and you can qualify. That's a big thing to apply early is, is number one. And then, I mean, for me in doing that, I was able to pay for all of my nursing books because you buy a big bundle um, with those scholarships. And that was the only outright charge that I had because um, I have also applied to the honors program at ICC, which paid for my schooling. How much did you earn in scholarships to pay for all those books? Oh, like 3,500, I think. It's a lot of books. Well, because that covers your books, your scrubs, um, some like standardized tests that you have to purchase. Like they do HESI testing, which prepares you for NCLEX. So a lot of just overall program supplies. So if someone mm -hmm. who hears 3,500 and gets freaked out, should they be freaked out or should they just start applying for financial aid, scholarships? I mean, are there lots of options? There are lots of options and I wouldn't panic because I mean, personally, I'm someone who likes to have the physical copy, which made my bundle more expensive. But after having been through the program, I would not recommend getting the physical books because I cannot tell you how many physical copies I have that are still in their little cellophane wrap. Because I mean, in the transition to online schooling, so many people have so much experience now, you can just open up your book online and hit control F and search for, I mean, whatever disease you want to look for, which is so much quicker than opening an actual book. So, I mean, if, if <laughs> you don't want that big expensive bundle, which really was kind of useless, go the cheaper route with the online books, unless you like have to have it to highlight, which I thought I did, but you really don't. Yeah. I wouldn't panic. Jared, what do you think of that? I totally agree. I mean, I, I do have, you know, a great big biology book that I bought that covers, you know, the 205 and 206, but I had, I never opened it. Everything I did everything from the online materials and it is just, it's so much easier. Mm -hmm. You know, like she said, control F, find whatever you're looking for. If something didn't, you know, sound right, or you can't remember something, you can always go, you know, control F, where at the, where in the book was this? Um, 
because part of you know studying for the exams and things would they hand they uh, have available um, uh, knowledge points to to learn to to study with, and so I would be filling them out and think, well, I I don't think this is right. So instead of taking out this you know 1200, 1300 page book, just pull up the material, control F, where was this at? And then it's all right there. And it's it's wonderful. Control F. It's all you need to know for nursing. <laughs> right? That's that's the magic. That's the magic tip. Control F. Yep, that's where the magic from, happens. Right. Who knew? Control F is is all the magic. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know. I should know about control F. You know, I'm like a journalist. Who knew? Control F. But I guess when you're looking through like these mammoth encyclopedia, gigantic, enormous mm -hmm. books with all these terms, mm -hmm. that's good. That's good stuff. Uh, Sophia, when it came to to paying for college, you've you've gone to ICC. That's you've right. also transferred to Bradley, mm -hmm. and I think you said you were doing another program, right? That's right. I'm going to uh, I'm getting my MA in literature from NIU this fall. So, how do you pay for this? Can you help people to understand? Yeah, like many other people, ICC uh, was really appealing to me because of the financial aspect. Um, so the deal I had worked out with my parents is that they would cover two years of ICC schooling for me, which was very generous and helpful. Um, and so like Kiara, I um, got a scholarship that I used to pay for my books and that kind of thing. Um, and although it's not, you know, the traditional college experience, I did live at home and commuted to school. Um, and when I transferred to Bradley, this is important um, to any ICC student who's looking to transfer to Bradley. Depending on your GPA, you might be eligible for the, oh, okay, Rain, are you interested? Okay, yes. Yeah, so listen up. So um, you might yes, be eligible yes. for the presidential scholarship. Bradley is known for having a rather high tuition. Um, and so having it cut in half is extremely, extremely helpful. Um, and once again, I lived at home for that. I commuted to campus. Of course, during the pandemic, it didn't matter anyway. <laughs> so I saved a ton of money doing that. You do give up some of the social aspects of college, but you know what Kiara was saying resonated with me about college is not necessarily, at least for us, a social thing, but more of a um, really about chasing your dreams. So yeah, and then my uh, program this fall is fully funded uh, because I'm a TA. So fully funded and a stipend, um, which is great. Uh, and for me, it's because I was an SI leader. So being an SI leader was the best choice I ever made. And I'm really grateful to ICC for facilitating that because ultimately that's how I get to go to grad school for free, essentially. So pretty Did cool. Did you have any idea that that would be something? Be you know, I effort? knew that it would look good on a resume, but I didn't realize how um, handy it would really come and how many opportunities and how many doors it would open for me. So yeah, definitely get involved because you never know down the road how it might help you. So your parents helped you with tuition for ICC. And then yes. you, got you got scholarships for books. And then for Bradley, you were able to get this presidential scholarship. That's right. So I only paid um, half of what students would normally pay for two years. So I am in debt, but compared to most of my peers, it's not very significant at all. So And, and to get that presidential scholarship, is it super competitive? Are there a limited number of those? No, actually, you only have to maintain a certain GPA. So it's it's based on your GPA. Um, and then there are two transfer scholarships, um, which I applied for. And, you know, I'm not ashamed to say I didn't get it, but my best friend did. Um, and it's two fully funded scholarships. So um, you write an essay for that. So, yeah, Raina, definitely look into that. You write an essay, I believe, um, and I think you get two letters of recommendation. Um and then they select two applicants um, to go to Bradley for free. So, um, and you know, not as many people apply to it as you would think. Um, and it's a really, really great opportunity. Like I said, my best friend got it. So pretty excited for her. Yeah, I love that. And I think people don't apply because they're thinking they don't have a chance or they don't want to do the work. But I mean, how much work is it to apply? You know, it's hardly any work at all. It's really... Um, really not difficult. I think I did it in an afternoon. <laughs> wow. Okay. So that's great. And if anyone's interested in, in, in learning how to do that, you can help them. I'm sure. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. Testable. Um, but you, so when it came to your experience at Bradley, did you ever, well, you didn't live on campus, right? That's right. Yeah. And, but were you able to be involved? Did you meet people who lived on campus? Were you able to like spend the night at a friend's? 
Yeah, you know, I because of the pandemic, unfortunately, most of my time at Bradley was spent at home. I only had one semester that was uninterrupted by the pandemic, but I was able to make tons of connections at Bradley um, and, you know, gain very valuable mentors in the English department. Um, and, you know, you got to give yourself time because my first semester at Bradley, I felt like I wasn't making friends. I was like, I, I knew so many people at ICC. I felt like ICC was a big family. And here at Bradley, I don't know anyone. I'm I'm alone. But you just got to give yourself time. You know, it, it's not friendships aren't built in just one semester usually. Sometimes they are, but uh, you got to give yourself time. And by the end of my time at Bradley, I I felt at home and I felt, you know, welcome and like a member of the community. So, and I think at ICC, Bradley, anywhere, that's just good advice is give yourself some time, you know? <laughs> yeah. How did you find your places at Bradley and where did you find them? Well, let's see. Um, it's kind of funny is primarily through my professors. So, um, the assistant dean of the College of Liberal Arts is my uh, favorite professor at Bradley. Uh, he was a wonderful mentor to me. And through his classes, I kind of started making friends with people, started finding connections. Um, and of course, just talking in class. That's true of my time at ICC and Bradley is if you participate in class, you tend to get to know the other people who participate. I know it's tempting to put on a hoodie and sit in the back corner and not talk, but Really, if you do talk in class, I think you'll feel a lot more um, socially fulfilled in college. Yeah. It sounds like the the teachers are really helpful. Like they want you to be successful. Yes, um, absolutely. It's just letting them know what you need. When it came to you choosing ICC and the financial part of, of this transition, was that easy for you? Was it hard for you? Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, prices compared to four-year college were very reasonable. And then also... Um, in my specific field, there's quite a few dealer specific scholarships that you can get on top of the ICC scholarships that cover everything. So like you can get the honors um, scholarship, but on top of that, you can also have scholarships from a facility that you might work at. So for me, I will be working at Berkey's Farm Store, which is a Case IH dealership, and uh, they offered to pay for part of my school and then all of my tools and uh, related to that, like books. So um, in the program that we have, actually, I have my books right here. Yeah, let's see. Our teacher makes sure to give you the biggest, the best, so that you don't have to get another one later in the semester. So we get about three books over two years um, because they're just so big. Uh, this one's 5,000 pages or something like that. Companies will help pay for your tools and your tuition. And tools are a big deal. So you'll spend about $4,000 just on your tools. Wow. Wow. When you can get a company to pay for all that, it's really nice. And then on top of that, they'll pay a certain amount per semester. So they're paying for your tool for your tools, but then what do you have to give them in return? Um, so it depends on the company, um, but this company in particular, so they give you them as a loan. So if you work for a year for them, you pay off your entire loan. If you work less than a year, then you pay off just how much the tools were. So you're really not ever down anything. Um, it's just you might actually have to pay for your tools if you don't work at least a year. So you work a year and then you get to take these tools with you. You have thousands of dollars worth of tools. Yep. And they're paying for your, tu well, for a lot of your tuition as well. And another really cool thing about the DPET program is that through our internships, they're not, they're, they're paid internships. So you're able to make back almost three quarters of your tuition just by doing these internships. How do you know about the internships? As soon as you see DPET and you see the syllabus or you see like what you're getting into when you sign up for it, you'll see their, uh, uh, which classes you're going to be taking and internship is part of that. And so they'll bring that up to you as well. And on the brochure, it does tell you about that. So depending on where you work, you can pay all your um, tuition off just for your internship. With the internships, do they place you in a particular company? No, 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 no. You get to decide all that yourself, um, depending on what you're interested in. They'll give you um, recommendations of where they think you might fit the best, or you can tell them what you're thinking and they'll give you advice, but they will not make you go anywhere. You have to go at least one place because you have to do an internship, but they're not going to say you have to go here or you have to go to John Deere or something like that. What about for the student who says, you know, Henry, I kind of wish they would tell me because I don't want to have to apply and figure it out myself. Yeah. So you are going to have to apply. You are going to have to do an interview. 
because you're applying for a real job just like anyone else would, but they will point you in the direction. So if they see you're excelling in a certain class at uh, ICC, then they might be like, oh, so you were doing really well in um, say field equipment, harvesting equipment. I'm gonna try to put you in an ag dealership. So maybe they'll put you or give you contacts to look at certain websites for like John Deere, or Case IH, or maybe you're really into the construction side and they'll give you uh, John Deere's construction side or Caterpillar. Yeah. Um, so they'll point you in the directions that they see fit. So only 20 kids are accepted per year in the DPET program. So they're able to get a very personal relationship with you and they will understand you and have a relationship with you um, from the day to day uh, time that you've had together. So they will have an idea of what you're interested in after a year because you don't do your internships until your second year. Yeah, that sounds amazing. I mean, it's it's it sounds like just the hands-on experience and the mentoring and the support. It's it sounds like a great experience, and you seem to love it. You like light up when you talk about it. Oh, I I definitely enjoy it. Yeah, that's awesome, Reina. I I want to learn more. Your your um your connection's been breaking up a lot, so that's why, and and it was causing some some feedback in that. And I don't know if I'm gonna I'm gonna try to include you a little more. Um, I don't want you to feel you're so wonderful <laughs> and I don't want you to feel like I'm not including you, but it was a little bit, it was a little bit hard the past couple of times. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to wrap things up very soon. So there's a, there's a couple of questions that I'm going to try and have you answer. Um, when it comes to getting help, when it comes to a student who's like, man, this is just hard. I'm really struggling. Let's see it, Raina. I could ask you. So if you're a new student <clears throat> and you need help, where are some places to get that help? whether it's academic or social? First off, I would say probably um, the counselors um, or like the academic counselors, they can help like put you in like, put you in the right direction. Um, but I don't know. I mean, just, you know, people go on their website, you know, seek out um, their resources. They have a bunch of resources and they're starting to develop new resources. Um, so yeah, it's kind of a developing process, but there's definitely, many people that you can go to and yeah so yeah i they have a good support system through educators and through um advisors yeah thanks for that you know what our um i'm gonna mute your feed again because it's 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 gonna be hard for me to use this stuff because your your stuff is lagging so much you have such wonderful things to share your information is not lagging it's just the connection between your your physical being and your audio. So I'm going to meet you again. I'm going to try, I'm going to try you with one last question, but um, thanks. I, I appreciate it. Sophia, would, would you mind doing me a favor? Cause I know you're real involved as an SI and also when it comes to supporting students, if someone's having some academic challenges, where do they go to get help? Absolutely. So you want to go to the Academic Support Center and that's on the second floor of the library on the East Peoria campus. You can also um, access it through uh, ICC's website. Um, and a lot of people feel an impediment to seeking help at the support center because they're embarrassed. They think that seeking academic support somehow means that you're dumb or you're not ready for college or you're childish or whatever. And none of those things are true. Um, and I think it's important that people know that those of us who are staff at the academic support center, we're not thinking those things about you at all. We're not judging you at all. First of all, you coming to the academic support system, uh, center is what gives us our check every month. <laughs> so without students, we don't have a job. And second of all, um, we know from working with people, I remember one semester of SI, I was just marveling at the folks that I worked with because every person who showed up to my session, I felt was smarter than me and had something brilliant to say that I had never thought of. And it was just this group of super geniuses. And I was like, wow, these kids are smart. They really know what they're talking about. Um, and every session was so fruitful and so delightful because everybody had something cool to share. Um, and so actually, I think that seeking academic support is a sign of strength and a sign of intelligence and not a sign of weakness. So if you're embarrassed in the slightest, don't be. Yeah. Kiara, you were, you were uh, nodding. I'd love to hear your thoughts because I know you you struggled a little bit and then you you got some help. So just share a little more about like, where do you get help if you're a nursing student and you need help? Yeah. I, everything that Sophia said, I a hundred percent agree with. 
And um, when I was 18 starting out, I definitely thought that if I sought help or went to the library or anything, it made me dumb and I should just be able to figure it out on my own. Otherwise, I mean, everyone who was older than me just knew more. But that definitely isn't the case. I mean, like she said, seeking help actually kind of speaks to your knowledge, like you're smart enough to know when you don't know. Um, in the nursing program, definitely the academic support center is useful. I actually worked in the library um, at the Peoria campus. And so I was able to get a lot of help just working there. Um, so I would advise students to utilize the library because I mean, people don't often, but they have a huge selection of books that are oftentimes actually the books that you use in your class. Like you can go in there and use those books and speak with the librarians and get help with research and things like that was a huge asset for me. Yeah, that's awesome. And I think just that power of you know, getting help's amazing. We mentioned this the other day, we had another conversation and the beauty of help is that when someone offers you help, all of a sudden they invest in you. They care about you. I think even as a caregiver, Jared, you are a great example of what you were talking about earlier with your your significant other being in in the hospital and the nurses who helped so much. And it was that experience that made you want to do what they do. You know, that idea of what, when people help you, they get so much out of it. There's actually been some recent data that says one of the things that make people happier than ever is doing something for someone else. So recognizing, I love Sophia, how you mentioned, you know, you get paid. If people don't come in, you don't get paid. They're going to close the, the academic support center because no one's coming. But at the same time, you're able to do something and offer the gift of, of being able to help. And anybody who comes in there is giving you the gift of allowing you to do what you love to do. So, you know, my, my advice column I wrote for years is called help me Harlan. So like help me is part of what I do. And uh, I really do see it as a sign of strength and people don't always get that, especially uh, first generation students. Um, I think you're all, I don't think there's any first gen students in our group today, but I know just from, those of you who I've worked with who are first-gen students, you know, they want to have the answers. Uh, they don't want to ask for help. Have you found that, Sophia? Yeah, I have found that. Um, I found that a lot of people, you know, want to have the answers. I think that's our nat natural in inclination as, as humans, but there is a strength in saying, hey, I don't know. You know, I've been in that position many times of just saying, I have no idea. Somebody help me out. Yeah. I want to know, we're going to wrap this up. I have two last questions for mm -hmm. you. And I want to know, I want to know if you have any tips or tricks. And Kara, you did a great job. I love the the textbook tip. That's a great one. So you you might be all out, but we'll see if you have if you have another one. But I'd love to know if there's anybody out there who's starting their college career at ICC or someone who's even in high school. Like, what's a great tip or trick? And Henry, you've given us good ones too. Man, there's so many good ones we've gotten. But um, Henry, do you have another tip or trick, something you wish someone had told you about your experience at ICC? Uh, well, I mean, it was one thing that I figured out later on, but uh, what I was really, what I really appreciated was that I was able to take just a single class in something to get to know if I really enjoyed it. Uh, in high school, I mean, a lot of people don't have a real definitive uh, idea of what they're going to do later on. And ICC gives you um, the tools to be able to just try out one certain thing in one certain class. Now, that's not, I mean, you can't just take one defect class, but you could take one automotive class, which is very similar, and kind of get your uh, understanding about it. And that was something I really appreciated. Yeah. And if you don't like it, then you do something else, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you can do that because it's not crazy expensive. Yeah, that's that's another one of those things that people don't get when it comes to a community college experience. Like you try stuff out. It's like the stakes are low because you either like it or you don't. Uh, Kara, do you have a, a tip or trick? In the nursing program, you have so many different books because they want you to have lots of resources. But in having all those books, I mean, you have like a med surge book, you have a Lewis book, you have a Potter and Perry, you have a Pearson and then you get to the exam and they expect you to have read 500 pages of content. And that's impossible if you're, if you have to do it in two weeks, that's, I mean, it's really not possible. So the biggest tip that I have is don't be afraid to ask your professor, where are you pulling the questions from? Because that teaches you what book to, to focus more on. I mean, if the content is majority from Pearson, remember those lab values and those definitions. Don't focus on the lab values from Lewis because that might be used on exam eight. 
just because they say there is content in there about the, the content that you're covering doesn't mean that they're actually utilizing it for that lesson. So always ask your professors before you start studying, hey, what should I focus on? Like, that is what helped me pull my grade from like a C to an A. Like, that's a huge thing. I think it's scary to talk to professors, though, mm -hmm. especially if you're new and you're not doing well. It definitely well. is. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. So what do you do? What do you say? How do you approach the professor? Relate to them like a real person. Tell them like, I mean, even if you are struggling, don't focus on that. Say, you know, my, my dream is to be a nurse. This is what I want to do. I don't want to fail. I want to be successful and I need your help. If you kind of put it like the ball in their court and let them know that you respect them as a professor and that you're not trying to, I mean, you're not trying to fail. It's not for your lack of effort. You do want to do this. The biggest thing is to take that initiative and then professors will respect you and, you know, reciprocate that level of communication. Jared, do you have a tip or trick that you can offer? I know you're, you're, you're new, but you're back. I, I kind of came back in the fall late. So, you know, I, I went to ICC once years ago. Uh, I had to update all my passwords and confirm my usernames and all this stuff. When I actually got to get to the point where it's like, okay, I can start taking classes, you know, they, they had me talk to an advisor. And there are advisors specifically for the nurse, nursing and healthcare programs. I just explained to my advisor, here's, here's my plan. This is what I want to do. I'm not sure if I want to stay, you know, and go through ICCs. I might want to go out. Um, what would be the best option? Through working with her, she actually built all but one class of my schedule for the fall semester for me to say, these are the classes that you will need on this journey this is going to be the great greatest place to start for you. And then I just needed to pick one elective. I just picked an elective, just one that caught my eye and said, you know what, I'm going to go for this. What do you think of that? And she said, that looks great. Here's your plan. Like it was so easy. It floored me actually, because it was just, you know, here's, here's your classes. Here's the breakdown. Your schedule's all set up. We added in this elective. You're good to go. And it was maybe three days worth of communicating back and forth because I had to track down my old ACT scores to submit. So I didn't have to take any uh, placement tests. But, you know, after all that, good to go. So would you say to talk to your advisor, talk to your academic advisor, would that be the tip? Oh, yeah. Build a relationship with them so that they know your goals. Because the more they know about you and your goals, the better that they can help you. Yeah, that's great. Sophia, do you have a, a tip or trick? Yes, I have two uh, tips. So the first one is check Blackboard frequently. Uh, my first semester at ICC, I checked it maybe twice and that was a really bad move. <laughs> so I would say check it daily on weekdays. And number two, the East Pure campus is a giant circle. So if you get lost, keep walking and eventually you'll end up back where you were. Uh, that always trips people up. But remember, every floor is a giant circle. So just keep moving forward and you'll get back to where you started originally. That trips people up a lot. That sounds like life, right? Not just not just for life at, at ICC. Raina, we're gonna see if we're gonna see if this works. Uh, do you have a tip or trick, Raina? Um, yeah. Um Number one, I would say definitely spend time on, you know, any school's website, um, just, you know, kind of get a feel of it. I know that's not, you know, it's only one way to see like the school in a form, but yeah, I would say that one for sure. And yeah, just, just try new things and, you know, as, as they say, I guess you could say respect the process. Yeah. Thank you. I have one last question and then we're going to wrap this up and I'm just grateful for you all opening up and sharing so much. There's so much great information here and I just love that we can help so many people with this. So Henry, if you go back in time and meet freshman in high school, you and Sophia, if you could do the same and, and Kiara and, and Jared going back a little bit further, seeing high school freshman, you, and give and give freshmen you a little bit of advice, uh, something that's going to help you to navigate what's ahead. What would you tell you if you had that opportunity? And uh, Kiara, I'm really interested to hear what you would tell you 
Because I think I think in a short amount of time you've been through a lot. It sounds mm-hmm. like, and and learned a lot. Uh, so, what if you had the chance to see high school freshman you? What would you tell you? Probably just trust your gut and trust yourself, because a lot of people will pull you in a lot of different directions over the next four years, and kind of stay focused on the path of what you know you want. Like if other people think you'll be better at something else or you're not good enough at this, but in your heart, you feel like that's what you want to do. Focus more on what you want, not what others want from you. That's so hard, especially as a freshman in high school. Yeah. You know, it's like, want me, like me. So that's good. Uh, Henry, what would you tell you if you could go back in time? I would say stay motivated and stay focused, uh, especially when you're doing online things. Um, Just showing up, and being there for it will do worlds for you. Uh, and taking the time to go over and discuss tests afterwards, things like that, just being involved will help you get will help you get a better grade and overall be a better student. Yeah, I, that going over tests, I know, Kara, you mentioned this as well, that when you don't do well on a test, don't just move on. Mm-hmm. Talk to your professors, talk to your teachers, go over the tests, right, Kara? You, you, you're like, oh, that's yeah. so important. Every okay. single exam, even if you get an A, go go figure out which ones you messed that skipped you from the 100. Mm, that's I mean, great. that's huge. Yeah, <laughs> who would think to do that? Right, so you go over the ones that you get wrong no matter what. Oh, yeah. Even if I got a 98, I'll go figure out which two I missed. You've gotten a 98? <laughs> I know. <laughs> not to toot my own horn. It's not common. <laughs> Not easy. <laughs> How does someone get 90? I guess you get 98 by going over mm-hmm. the, the previous yeah. exams where you got yeah. an 88. I yeah. love that. That's cool. Uh, Jared, if you go back in time and give you a tip, freshman high school, you, what would you tell you? It's seriously not as hard to live than it is to, to, to see from a distance, you know, like, when I was, uh, you know, senior in, in high school, you know, I, I didn't, I, I would have gone to college if I had the, the opportunity, but it wasn't something that really interests me because, you know, it's another step. It's more education. It's, you know, I've already been through 12 years of this. I'm just tired of sitting in a classroom, but, you know, going, being here now, you know, to, to tell past past me that, you know, it's, it's not as bad as you make it out to be, you know, it's just apply, keep applying yourself more, um, utilize the tools that are there and you can succeed. Do you wish that you had pursued this path earlier? I think if I did, I might not be this passionate about it Yeah. um, because I didn't have the life experience But if I could take, you know, everything that I am now and go back to then, definitely to say, you know, you can help so many more people going this route and here's why and here's what you can do. And, you know, don't be don't be afraid because ICC is here to help you succeed. You just have to apply yourself to accept their help to succeed. Yeah. I love the background sound effect of the engine roaring. Yeah, sorry. I'm like, on a- no, no, it's, you don't have to apologize. It was cool. It's like, if you apply yourself, <laughs> you know, like you'll get there. <laughs> I, dig, I dig it, man. I thought you were actually like, had a sound effect thing. I thought you were like creating your own kind of like TikTok thing where, you know, you're no, built. Just, <laughs> it was good. Life. Right. It was good. That life stuff. You know, I, I hear you. It's an unfair question to say, hey, do you wish you had done this other thing? Because, I mean, you wouldn't appreciate what you're doing or have the ownership. I think that's the thing of like you own it, like you all own what you're doing. And, yeah. and a lot of times when you're just finishing high school, you're like, you know, I just want to own tomorrow. Like, I, I don't really know what I want. And, you know, you figured out what you wanted. And now that you want it, you go hard and, and you'll get it. And I think that's... Yeah. I do have one more thing to add if I can. Yeah, yeah. And that, you know, like what Sophia was saying about, you know, being in the ballet and heavy in the ballet, and then she had a life event, which changed that, you know. I I guess for me, it's like 
you can't be discouraged by a life event. You just have to take it and move forward. If, if something comes out of it, that's a passion, follow that passion. Because, you know, like I said, I never expected healthcare, nursing, anything. Um, hospitals sometimes made me physically ill to be in them, but now I can't see myself anywhere, but, and so I'm so focused and so passionate about getting into that nursing role and helping so many people that, you know, my, my grades from when I was in high school to now completely show that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's magical. And thanks. And thanks for sharing that. Sophia, what would you tell you if you can go back in time and have the opportunity to see freshman in high school, 15 year old, 14 year old Sophia, what would you tell you? I would tell myself that there are many avenues to happiness and success um, and that it's okay to switch avenues sometimes. You know, I was dead set on being a ballerina. I thought that's the only way I would be happy and successful in my life. But here I found a totally new avenue and who knows, maybe in 10 years, I'll find another one. Um, and so just be open to that, that, you know, happiness and success can find you all sorts of different ways and you just got to be open to it. Yeah. Being open. I love that. Raina, what would you tell you if you can go back in time? If I could go back in time, I would tell myself to, you know, just like, stop trying to figure it out. Like it's, there's no way to figure out like anything basically unless you do it. So, you know, just go with it with an open mind. And um, for me and like all my experiences, it's, it's been a ripple effect. Like it's just one after the other. And mostly because I've just, I was like, all right, that's, you know, seems interesting. I'm not, you know, I might not know everything about it, but I'm going to try it. So, and I think that's, you know, I think that's really important to, to take with you. It's just to like, keep trying, you know, if you don't get something, you know, look for the positives in it and don't, don't dwell on it. Like, don't beat yourself up over it. Like there's always like other opportunities that you can pursue. Yeah. That's awesome. I have one last question. This is the very last question. And it's for you, Henry. It's for you. Do you always smile? Cause you are the best. Uh, smiler. <laughs> You have been smiling I like throughout to. our whole time together. And is that just natural for you? Is it easy? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You got a nice way about you. Did you notice that? Anybody else notice that? You really, you're really, you're really good at smiling. I mean, you're just Thank you. yeah. And you got and it's and it's it's very comforting. It's a nice thing. So anyway, I appreciated it. <laughs> and I wanted to I wanted to mention something earlier, but it wasn't the right time. But you're all so wonderful, and and I'm just so grateful that we have this chance to to be together and to share and to help other people. Is there anything else you wanted to to either clear up or offer before I, I wrap this up? And if if anybody has anything else to share, you're welcome to share it. Uh, I feel like we did a really great job offering some insight into your lives and also what it's like to be at ICC. And I'm just so grateful to have the chance to visit with you. So thank you, Henry, Jared, Sophia, Reina. Kiara, I'm really grateful and I'm so happy for all of you. And if I can do anything uh, for you to support you and your dreams, let me know. I'm happy to connect you with anyone I know. Find me on LinkedIn, find me through social media. And truly, like all I want is for people to be happy. Um, it's just a wonderful thing to see other people smile and light up. And for anyone of you watching, if I can help you and be a resource, please let me know. I know everybody here, if, if people can reach out to you, just give a give a uh, you know, you nod your head, say yes, let us know. I, I know that you're there in everyone's corner. So for everybody watching, thank you for being here. I'm Harlan Cohn. This has been another college conversation with ICC students. And as always, I look forward to being in your corner and continuing the conversation. Thanks everybody. Thanks for being here.